Hi everyone, so suppose you have a function f of x and you want to write it as the sum of two other functions, f e of x and f o of x, as I've written down here, where f e and f o are even and odd functions respectively. So what I mean by that is that f e has this property that I've just put up here, where if you flip the sign of the argument x, then the value of the function itself is unchanged. That's the defining property of an even function. And f o has the property that if you flip the sign of the argument x, then you also flip the sign of the function itself, right? So that's the defining property of an odd function. And so we are trying to find a way to express an arbitrary function f as the sum of an even function and an odd function. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. Why is that something that you'd want to do? Well, I'm sure there are various reasons, but the reason or the application of this that I'm familiar with is uh, can be helpful with integration in particular. If you're integrating over a symmetrical range of x values, the odd part of the function uh, will integrate to zero, uh, which basically follows from the interpretation of an integral as a signed area under a graph. I'll put a link in the description to a video I did recently where that property that I've just mentioned um, was really helpful. So an awareness of the fact that you can split functions up into other functions that have nice symmetry properties um, is a useful thing to have. So how do we know what to actually choose for f e of x and f o of x? Well, we basically need to form a pair of simultaneous equations. We've got one equation here, but if we're trying to find what f e and f o are in terms of the function f of x, we need a second equation. And that can come from the symmetry properties that we're aiming to have. So what I mean by that is we take our original equation, let's call that equation one, and we just replace x with minus x, right? Because you can evaluate your functions at any particular argument. We can evaluate them with an argument of x or an argument of minus x. So let's do it with minus x. And we very straightforwardly get that f of minus x is f e of minus x plus f o of minus x. So all I've done is relabel x to minus x there. But now we can use the desired symmetry properties and say that, well, therefore, f of minus x should be equal to f e of x, because from that first underlined property at the top, f e of minus x is the same as f e of x. And for the odd part, we use the symmetry property at the top right, um, which is that f o of minus x is minus f o of x. So now we get a minus sign here, and we get minus f o of x. I'm going to label that as equation two, because then equations one and two taken together are basically a pair of simultaneous equations that we can solve for f e and f o in terms of f. Now, because equations one and two only differ by a sign, the sign in front of f o, we can solve them pretty straightforwardly. Firstly, by adding equations one and two together to make the f o cancel out. If you do that, the right hand side will just be two times the even part f e of x. And the left hand side, um, I'm actually flipping the sides around, but the left hand side is now f of x plus f of minus x, right? Um, and then similarly, if we want to make f e cancel and get an expression for f o, we can instead take equation one and subtract equation two. That's going to give us something very similar looking. Um, we get twice the odd part f o of x um, is just f of x minus f of minus x. So of course we can then just divide both of those equations by two and we found our even and odd parts and so the conclusion to this, let's just write out our conclusion, um, is that any function f of x you can write in the following way, you can write it as f of x plus f of minus x divided by two where this part of the function is even, has even parity. Uh, plus the other contribution, which is the odd bit, which is f of x minus f of minus x all divided by two, where that second contribution to our function there has odd parity. And so that second bit is the bit that would disappear or turn into zero if you were to integrate your function over a symmetrical range. So as a particular example, let's think about f of x being uh, e to the power of x the reason I'm thinking about that particular example is that a lot of the other commonly used functions like trigonometric functions already have definite parity. In other words, they're already even or odd. Um, but e to the x is a commonly used function 
but it's neither even nor odd. Let's just think about what, what we would get. So e to the x, um, well, your even part would be e to the x plus e to the minus x divided by 2, straight from the previous line of, of working there. By definition, that is the hyperbolic cosine of x, so hyperbolic cosine of x. And similarly, the odd part would be e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2, which is a hyperbolic sine, again, by definition of x. So e to the x you can write as hyperbolic cos of x plus hyperbolic sine of x. Um, and so those are the even and odd parts of e to the x, respectively. If you take a look at the thumbnail, you should be able to see how those two hyperbolic trig functions add together to make e to the x. So that's all for now. I'll be back again very shortly with another quick video on even and odd functions.